Hey, and welcome to another episode of Motors and Meats. Today, we're doing the brakes on the car. So we've got new rotors, we have new pads, we have new lines that are steel braided, and we have some new fluid that's kind of a race spec fluid, uh, just like an entry level. It's the uh, what it, Motul 600, I think is what it's called. So if you've done track days, you're probably familiar with that, or if you do autocross. Also today, we've got pork spare ribs to put on the smoker. I've got those prepared and uh, sitting out on the smoker already, so they should be getting nice. It's gonna take those about four, four and a half hours to cook, and I'm hoping to be done with the brakes a lot sooner than that, that then we can check out the ribs whenever we get done. So first up, I wanna show you the old stuff. You can see, I'll get in really close here in a little bit once we take these off, but you can see these discs are really worn. There's quite a lip on there. The pads are actually in good shape. So I've got an, an old one here because I've already done the other side and take a look at that. There is a substantial lip and lots and lots of grooves all the way around that. And you compare it to the new one, which is still on the packaging here. There is you know, no lip. There's not supposed to be a lip, I suppose. These are very, very worn. The pads themselves are in pretty good shape. There's lots of meat left on those, but I'm upgrading those to the Hawk Blue pads here. So same amount of thickness on them, but these are supposed to allow a lot more heat to go through them and still stop the car. And here's the other side that I've already done. Nice looking clean. Oh, that's so pretty. These actually have a coating on them, so they won't get rusted after I wash the car. Uh, which needs to happen a, a lot right now. <laughs> Don't look at that. Anyway, there's the new blue pads, new rotors. Come to the other side. Same thing to the rear. New rotors, new blue pads. Everything is looking good. And one big thing that I want to make sure and point out is that after you've done this, you're going to want to pump up the brakes before you go trying to back out of your driveway because whenever you squeeze those pads down, like I'm going to show you here in a moment, that pushes all the brake fluid back inside of the reservoir. And when you step on the brake that first time, you're not going to stop. And ask me how I know that. I did that by accident <laughs> once before. And once was all it took to remember not to do that again. I'm going to start with the rear and then we'll move on to the front. But one thing I wanted to mention, I am gonna break this into two videos. First, today we're just doing rotors and pads for a few reasons. Uh, we're gonna follow up in a second video with the hoses or lines, whatever they're called, they're braided lines now, and uh, with the new fluid. So a couple reasons. One, I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of time to not bore you to death with a really long video today. And two, I wanted to test what the feeling of the brakes was like with each step right there. So we first have the uh, the stock set up, which I was starting to feel a little bit spongy, and you saw how little wear was on the pads. I honestly don't trust them a whole lot. I always downshift and use the engine braking a lot whenever I'm slowing the car down. And the first time that I took it out on the track, I realized I couldn't do that, and then I had some brake fade pretty quickly. So. Anyway, I want to test what just new rotors and new pads are like, even with the old lines and the old fluid. And then whenever we put on those braided lines and the new fluid, and they're the racing temp fluid, that uh, we should see another step, another increase. Anyway, and also I'm missing some tools that I need <laughs> to do the brake lines with. You need the, uh, the flare wrenches, and I don't have but one flare wrench, and I need about four different ones, and I don't have any of those that I need. So we'll do part two after I get some flare wrenches, and it's still August in Mississippi. I don't know if you can tell. I'm drenched having already done the first side, and it's only 930 in the morning now, so <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll break it up a little bit. Once the wheel is off, you can see everything that's going to come off. We're going to remove the rotor and this clip and this pin, and that's going to allow the pads to come out. And then we're going to hang that up back here. We'll take off these screws right here and the brake disc will just come right off. Pop a new one on, stick everything back together, and it's done. There's one extra step on the front that I'll show you, another bracket that you have to remove whenever you're taking off these big heavy bolts. 
but really this is this is a simple simple job don't let this job scare you away from doing a diy things you need for this there's really a small list you need new rotors new pads i use a rubber mallet sometimes there you need a set of pliers that you can squeeze the brake pads down with uh, you need a very large tipped screwdriver and you want to make sure that's the right one and i'll show you when we get there then uh, you need something to punch that pin out with i'm just using a ruined screwdriver that's no longer any good some needle nose pliers a 10 millimeter socket a 10 millimeter hex breaker bar and regular ratchet the first thing we want to do is get this ready to come off so that means this is the brake wear sensor we want to pop it loose from this holding spot right here and uh, it looks like the previous person put this clip in upside down because that holder is supposed to be down here to hold this out of the way but mine's just been hanging out in space so that's fun you can see my uh, calipers are not in great shape they're, they're peeling already if yours are in great shape put a little piece of cloth here so that you make sure that you don't scratch that and then you just want to squeeze right there you grab onto this piece and pry against that and that pushes the pad back inside here it actually pushes the pistons in which pushes the fluid back inside the reservoir do the same thing over here give it a squish that's going to free that up uh, so those pads are basically loose now this little spring bracket is held in by this pin so we get our needle nose we got to pull out a um, cotter pin right here there's that easy enough set that to the side here's where the ruined screwdriver comes in and the rubber mallet we're going to drive this pin back Now, right here, you can see I'm just about to remove the pin from in front of this springy thing. So the springy thing, probably not the technical term, is probably about to fly off. But either way, once that comes out, the pads can just slide right out. We still have the wear indicators attached to them. There it goes. So that just comes out of the way. Set it to the side. And we got to finish getting this pin out and drive it the rest of the way. When you put it back in, make sure that, here we go, the end with the cotter pin hole goes in in the appropriate spot back there. So you want to put it back in this way. I'll remind you here in a minute on that part. So pads are coming out. And you can see that the wear indicators are attached. So going back to needle nose pliers. There we go. The old pads have this hole drilled in where the wear indicator can slide down in two and then that clip goes in there. The new pads don't have that, but my new pads are racing pads, so I guess they're not really designed to worry about things such as sensors like this. So I've got the other side just zip tied out of the way until I figure out what I want to do about that. I'm going to do the same thing about this. I suppose I could attempt to drill that out, but my guess is this is some really hard stuff. Old pads out. See, lots of meat left on these. Next, we're just gonna move this cord out of the way, and then we take out these two 10 millimeter Allen or hex bolts. Just pop the breaker bar in here, and ah. <clears throat> make sure you've got your tie up string or hanger ready because you're going to want to hang this by a spring or by by something so that all of the hoses and lines and everything attached to it don't become strained nice big bolt you can see these had some loctite on them So that's loose. I've got my rope here. I've got a loop tied into it already. You can feed that through there. And then up through my coil spring. No strain on the hoses and 
now we can change the rotor. For the rotor, you just have these two screws holding that on. And also, one more thing, the emergency brake or the uh, parking brake, if you have that engaged, you're gonna have a really difficult time getting this off because it functions on the inside of this drum. Now, as I mentioned before, you need to make absolutely sure that you have the right fitment of screwdriver here. I'm gonna use the impact wrench because that helps to break a little bit of rust, but you wanna make sure it's fully engaged. There we go. There are only seven pounds of torque on these, but the last thing you wanna do is strip that out and have to come drill it out and, and just add a ton of extra work to your day. So that's loose. These should come off, and this actually comes right off. Uh, on the other side, I had to bang on it a bit with a rubber mallet, but these are coming right off. There we go. You can see the parking brake shoe here and where you adjust it uh, actually is over on this side. Now, one thing I think is really important here, if you have the, uh, the type of new rotors that have the coating on them, is go ahead and change out your gloves for some clean ones at this point. That way, you don't get them dirty. And I've heard that you're not supposed to use brake cleaner on, uh, on the ones that are coated in zinc, I believe is what these things are coated in. So this will help to keep them looking nice and I suppose functioning well. It sucks whenever your hands are sweaty. <laughs> New and shiny. All right, so you have a couple of different holes in here. Of course, you've got the, the ones where the lugs go. Then you have these that have a sunken recess and then the ones without. For this car, we use the sunken recess. I'm sure these same rotors work on some other car that use those. Those look like they're threaded. Maybe there's some other purpose for it. If you know what that purpose is, put it in the comments. Get everything looking nice as you can. And then go ahead and set those Phillips screws back in. Still holding still. And we put in the bottom. Don't ram these home if you're using this tool. Take it easy. Get it to where it just stops. And then finish it by hand. Next up, we're putting our caliper back on. So basically the exact same way it came apart. Pull your string out. This is one of those where you definitely want to just get one side finger tightened and then move on to the other one because if you try to take that all the way down you'll almost definitely never get this one to go back in so, see how it doesn't want to grab you kind of have to fiddle it around a little bit and there it goes now they're both started and so we will run those home oh yeah loctite or in this case permatex blue pretend loctite this way up here. Don't torque it until they're both all the way seated. Fully seated. <clears throat> Feel like 63 pounds to you. Next up comes the new pads and these are not mirror images of each other and that's because you know there's no wrong way to put these in here. They only go in one way. You can, again, you can see I don't have the hole drilled here for the sensor to go in. Compare that to the old one, and there's the hole there. So, you know, this one can go here or here, it doesn't matter, as long as they have the same curved shape as the disc. They just slide into place. Then comes the spring. I'm gonna put this back in this way this time, even though 
you know, with the clip down, even though I'm not actually going to attach my wear sensors. It just makes me feel better that it's in there the right way. Now this can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but if you press that down all the way, it'll just slide past. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting it, but at some point, you'll probably still have to tap it. And what was I saying? Hey, one other thing. We have to put the cotter pin back in, and I have no idea where the cotter pin hole is on this. I don't know if I lined it up right or not. So I'll fix that off camera, but you definitely want to make sure that your cotter pin hole is pointing the right direction so you can just take this guy and pop it in like this. Wear sensors. So you're supposed to hook this back into here, hook this into your pad down there and poke that in. And same thing here, you're supposed to put, put that in that hole and then let this clip go into that clip. And then lastly, that pops underneath there like that. But I'm not doing any of that. I'm just gonna zip tie this to the brake line for now. All right, zip tie is done, got that out of the way. And that's it, those are, those are done. So now we put the wheel back on. Remember, pump the brakes before you try to drive anywhere. I'm gonna say that a few more times before we close out the video. Uh, the fronts are just like this, same thing, and I'll show you, except for you have one extra bracket that you use a 10 millimeter uh, socket to get off, and then you can hang the brake caliper. So here goes the wheel, and then we'll jump to the front. But before we do, let's go check on the barbecue. Let's see how these are looking. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's about two hours in. We've got a spray mixture here to just keep them moist. It doesn't take too much of this and not too often either. How do you cook ribs? What's your recipe? I like to not even wrap them. You've got them on here at 250 to 275 for about four, four and a half hours. And they come out great every time. Uh, sometimes I do wrap them if I feel like doing something different, but I always just go for the easy way, especially whenever I'm trying to work on the car and I need something that I don't have to think about while I'm cooking, but I can still have something good to eat. All right, we're onto the front of the car, and a couple things you'll notice that's different from the back. Um, I have spacers. You probably don't. Uh, you know, most people don't, but if you do, you do. And they're, you know, they're very snugly fit on here. So you have to sort of pry all the way around to get them out. And uh, once they're out, then you can move on like normal. The other thing that I can show you, I mentioned earlier, you've got your, uh, you know, you've got those two big hex bolts here, but then you also have right down here on this bracket, look at this, follow this brake line down, and then the bracket it screws into down here with a 10 millimeter. So you'll need to pop that off in addition to the big 10 millimeter uh, hex bolts that hold your, your brake caliper on. Other than that, the process is identical, so I think I'll just time lapse that for you. What do you think? Here we go. Said I would remind you guys a few times. So here it is. We pump the brakes. I want you to watch this. So all four wheels have had the the brakes, uh, the brake pistons uh, compressed. So that goes to the floor. And already it's pumped back up. But whenever I start to drive, I'm going to want to make absolutely sure that I've got good brakes before I take off. All right, so we've got the rotors done. We've got the pads done. We still have to do the, the lines, the braided lines, and we have to do the fluid replacement as well. Saving that for the next video. There'll be a link to that at the end of this video. But for now, we need to eat some barbecue, take a shower, 
and then take a quick test drive and see how it works. I know there's some break-in instructions on the box here that I'll pop up right here. You can pause that if you want. There you go. And then after we break those in, we'll see if we can notice any difference. Here we go. Oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty. Let's get these inside and slice them up. good that was good <laughs> definitely noticeable improvement and i don't know if maybe just uh it just the worn out rotors had been needing to be replaced i don't know if those uh blue race pads are really meant to you know really grind it down a little bit faster or if they're just supposed to be able to handle higher heat but either way this thing is stopping way better way better and now I had been feeling a sort of spongy sensation in the brake pedal if I did push it hard. And I don't know, I just assumed that that would be attributed to the brake lines 
you know, swelling because uh, they're old and, you know, they need to be replaced anyway. But I didn't feel any of that now that I've got the new rotors and the new pads on there. So I'm really excited to see what happens whenever I change out those other parts. Thank you guys for watching this. Again, check out these videos here if you haven't seen these yet. And stay tuned for the next one. We'll see what happens after we change out the rest of those brake components. Thank <laughs> you.